Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? It's time for another glaze review. In today's glaze review, we're gonna be going over Blue Lagoon from Amico Potter's Choice. The number on this is P-26 and it does have the food safe sticker on it here. I know I keep on pointing out this food safe sticker, but if you keep your eyes open and you come across enough glazes from Amico, some of them do have this sticker, but it has a big cross on it. So not all of Amico's glazes are food safe, even though they're pretty good about testing their glazes for food safety and putting them through a vetting system like this. So if you keep your eyes open though, I think the one that comes to mind is Palladium. That one has like a big no-no sign on it. Hold on, I gotta pour some out for the homies real quick. I am the homies, by the way. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is where I take glazes off the shelf that are already in bottle form because many people, I realize, don't make their own glazes at home. A lot of people just buy the glazes off the shelf. Luckily for me, Amico saw one of these videos and pretty much just like shoved a bunch of glazes at me. Usually what we do is we get some V-Mix with no grog in it because this is the closest thing to porcelain you can get and lots of people work with this clay body in their studios. I will also get a brown or redstone type clay body so that we can test it out and see how it looks on darker clay bodies. And I also get a couple of other testers just to see what we can mix it with. So in today's episode, we're going to be mixing these with Randy's Red, with Ron Roy's High Gloss Black, and I have a surprise for you guys. You guys probably don't really get to see this often, but I work with a redstone clay, and I also work with B-Mix the high majority of the time. I also work with porcelain, but I find that a lot of my porcelain test styles come out very close to my B-Mix test styles, so I don't show you guys those too often. But in today's episode, I have a batch of my recycled clay ready to glaze. As you can probably tell, this is clearly a mix in between my B-Mix clay body and my redstone clay body that has been mixed together and repurposed probably notice it's like a perfect mix in between the two colors so we're gonna use some recycled clay as well and see if it makes any difference on the clay oh so we're gonna put this glaze on a recycled clay body as well just to see if it makes any sort of a difference a lot of the times we'll get like a really different color on the red clay body versus the white but I want to see if there's any real difference on my recyclable clay that being the amalgamation in between my white and brown clay bodies and just for those of you at home this is gonna be the glaze by itself and this is also gonna be the glaze by itself this is to test the difference in between a brown and a white clay body. Okay, so a quick break. Lots of you guys are wondering why I pour on my glaze instead of brush it on like this. And just, just for the interest of science, what I wanted to do today was to show you one of these bowls off the shelf that I glazed with my turnstile with an actual brush, right? So whenever you glaze, you're supposed to put three layers on, and the real technique is to glaze it the entire time, one time this way, and then one time this way, and then one time this way, in alternating fashion, so you get a nice even coat. After this bowl right here is gonna be the bowl that I show you guys what it looks like when you paint the glaze on. I'm probably gonna put about three coats, and I will definitely show you this specific bowl when it comes out. That's it, okay, we can go to the nice pretty shots of me glazing again. And the rest of them are gonna be poured like I usually glaze in the high majority of my videos. Because this, this just hurts me right here, doing this. I have a turnstile, I have something to make the job easier, and this still hurts me. I suppose one positive thing about this is that it dries fairly well, and I will say, this glaze in particular, not all glazes I've ever worked with, mind you, but this glaze in particular seems to have kind of a shadowy pattern to it, so when you put one layer on, it looks like you got nothing on, and you put another layer on, and it looks like you have nothing on, and then you put your third and final layer on, and it's like, well, now I'm gonna have to put like five other coats for it to equal the amount in which I poured on. Not really, once it dried, it looks exactly how it does on the inside. So this is the outside, and this is the poured inside. This looks like the same amount of layering, even though I know that I poured the inside and I brushed the outside. So it, it looks like it doesn't have enough glaze on at first, but if you do buy this glaze, just wait for it to dry a little bit. Okay, but we're gonna pour the rest of these because that was literally like watching, that, that was, li it was literally watching paint dry.
Okay, so it's getting a little bit late and I'm starting to lose light, so we have to do this a little bit fast. So this cup right here is the recycled clay body with just the glaze on the inside and the rim. I did a little bit of raw work. I haven't shown you this technique, but I can assume that many of you can guess what it is, but I wanted to see if it would drip down the recycled clay body at all. This one back here, I poured the glaze on the inside and I brushed three coats on the outside. This one's gonna be interesting because it's really just to see the difference in between a poured glaze and a brushed on glaze. If it comes out the same, then it's gonna be like, okay, there's no real difference. This bowl up here is Randy's Red with Blue Lagoon on first, so the base coat is always gonna be Blue Lagoon down here, and the top glaze right here is Randy's Red, the top glaze over here is Ron Roy's High Gloss Black, and the top glaze over here is Jeff Campana's Mistake, which is my blue glaze with a Jeff Campana's base. This large bowl right here is just the glaze by itself, so this is just Blue Lagoon on a bean mix with no grog white clay body. This is as close to porcelain as you can essentially get. And this one is the same exact thing, except for it's on a red clay body. You can kind of see from the foot right there. So this is just the glaze by itself. Couple of things though, before we put these inside of the kiln, this glaze dries extremely fast. When I brushed it on, when I poured it on, no matter what I did, I even tried spraying one, but I kind of messed it up so you're not gonna see it right now. This glaze dries much faster than a lot of the other Celadon glazes that they sent me. I know it's not a Celadon glaze, but just to compare it to some other glazes, this dries really fast. The second thing is that, how many pieces is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is seven pieces, right? These are fairly normal size. These are all normal size cups and bowls. And I'm left with about one third of the bottle left. I used a lot of this glaze. I don't know why, when I've used way more pieces on with other glazes, it seems to stretch a little bit more. And I didn't add any water to this or anything. I don't consider those two things good or bad. They're not really indicative of anything. I just think that they're nice flavor text notes in case you buy this glaze and you're like, man, this glaze is drying really fast in comparison to the other glazes. That seems normal for me as well. Okay, we're losing daylight, so let's put these in the kiln. I think that these are all some pretty good testers that we got out, but let's start out with the base first. These two. Take the rest of these back over here, I just wanted to show you a little taste of what you were getting into. Okay, we got some pretty good testers here. Let's talk about the white and brown clay first, because this is a very drastic difference in between the two clay bodies. This bowl here is Blue Lagoon that was just straight poured on on the inside and outside on a bee mix with no grog clay body. But I think the key takeaway from this here is that if you really get this glaze on pretty thick, it makes a very nice textured glaze. You can see it a little bit on the rim right there if I close in the camera close enough. And I put the glaze on this bowl for a reason because this bowl is fairly clean on the sides. But if you really look in the texture right here, you can really start to see this glaze in action. This bowl is a little bit of a catch though, because if you put it on not thick enough, you pretty much get the color on the bottle, right? You, you pretty much get this bluish color. But if you put it on just thick enough, which is like really ultra thick, like four or five coats, you get this fantastic texture right here. You can probably see it inside the lines of the texture that I made on this bowl, and it's one of the reasons that I chose this bowl specifically to put this glaze on. I'd say this one's pretty good. This one came out almost exactly like what the bottle said it would come out as. You guys remember when we reviewed Smoke and it was like a tinge darker? This looks pretty identical, but where the magic really happens is where we start to bring out this brown test style over here. Keep in mind this is not a celadon type glaze, but if you put it on brown clay, it seems to have this type of clearish effect to where it kind of looks like it goes directly through the clay body. You can see right here that you can pretty much see directly through to the clay body. It's the same color as the foot right here, but a little bit darker because the glass like minerals. But if you put it on just thick enough on a red stone or brown clay body, it comes out this gorgeous blue. I know a lot of you guys don't really use brown or red clay bodies, but there definitely is a benefit 
when you can produce colors like this. This is amazing to me. If I had the option, I would pretty much never use this color. This is pretty much turquoise with extra steps in my book. But this, this is a gorgeous sapphire like blue. And it melts to have two different colors. I could have two different textures of color with one glaze. This, this is a pretty good find for me. I did a bunch of other tests too. There's a couple things that you really need to see. One of them is just kind of for fun, while the other one is like, you really need to see that one. So let me show you the first one. This cup here is a garbage clay cup. This means I got a bunch of my white clay and my brown clay and I mixed it together and it essentially made this type of tannish color clay. I was working on a video to show you guys the benefits of raw work or to show you a little bit of raw work or the history of raw work, which we will discuss later, don't worry about it. But this is technically raw work, where the majority of the body of the clay is raw, but the parts of the clay body that need to be food safe in order for them to be used are technically still food safe. So this is kind of the idea behind raw work. But for now, just know that this is the glaze on a recycled clay body, an amalgamation in between my redstone and bee mix with no ground clay body. You can probably see pretty easily that there's no glaze here, but I did put an extra thick coat of glaze on the very top here, and it turned kind of this greenish emerald clear slash glaze here, which makes sense to me, because this is essentially green, and this is essentially clear or light blue, the brown clay and the white clay, so it makes sense that sooner or later, it would kind of turn this greenish emerald color if you mix the two together. The other thing that I noted on the redstone clay body is that if you don't put it on thick enough, especially on red clay, it pretty much just turns into like this clear version of itself. Where it's thick, it's blue. Where it's thin, it turns a little bit clear, which is fine because this test style isn't true to that, seeing as it's made on a white clay body anyway. But just for the sake of testing, this is kind of how it looks if you put it on a darker clay body and you don't put enough of that glaze on. Speaking of which, I did a little experiment that I think a lot of you guys are going to want to see. I want to see if you guys can figure it out before I even tell you. Let me know in the comments below if you figured it out. But what is the correlation in between this brush, this bottle of glaze, and these three bowls right here? Go ahead. I'll wait. Except for no, I won't because it's YouTube and you can pause it. All three of these bowls are glazed with the same exact glaze, but glazed in different ways. There's so many of you on the YouTube channel that are always like, Oh, Dante, that's a brushing glaze. You're not supposed to dip it. You're not supposed to pour it on. It's a brushing glaze. I want to tell you guys a little secret that I learned technically by mistake quite some time ago. The difference in between a brushing, a dipping, a spraying and a pouring glaze is literally the amount of water in the glaze. Which means if I feel like spraying this glaze, all I have to do is put a tiny bit of water in here, hook it up to my compressor, and just pew pew that sucker all day long. When it comes fresh out of the bottle, it's fairly easy to brush on. But if I want to pour it on, I can also very easily add a tiny, tiny, and I, I, mean, I mean a very tiny, because this bottle's only a pint, bit of water to it. There was no water added to this glaze, but I do still want to show you the difference in between three different applications. This bowl here is a redstone clay body that I dipped and left on for about three or four seconds. Probably the best result I've gotten so far out of this glaze, and the only reason is because it's on a redstone clay body, much like these two right here as well. But this is what the test style came out as when I poured on the glaze. I took the bottle, shook it up real good, poured it on the outside, put a bucket underneath it, got some tongs, and then poured it on the outside. And this is what the glaze came out like. It came out fantastic. This, this is a very good bowl to me. This, however, is a bowl that I brush on the glaze. This bowl is about four or five coats deep of this Blue Lagoon glaze right here. And this is what it came out as. You can probably see that a high majority, even though it's the same exact clay body, of this glaze color disappeared. And keep in mind, this is the same exact glaze as this. The only real difference is that I brushed four or five coats of this stuff on this while I just kind of poured the glaze on here. And this is much faster to do. You guys have probably seen me do this before, but I just kind of poured it on and called it a day. While this I had to tip upside down, I had to put a coat on here, and then I had to make sure the whole thing's coated, and I had to do this, I had to do this four or five times. I did, I did this for you, you better click the like button. To be fair, some color came out really well on the top, and a little bit on the inside as well. I think this is a truer form of what the glaze assumed it was going to be before it came out of the kiln when I brushed it on, because technically a lot of people think that this should be a brushing glaze, although I don't, 
I don't really see where it says you need to brush it on on the instructions but as you can see on the outside I got no color some of you might like this some of you might really really like this but to be fair if I had a choice in between these two bowls and I saw them both at a table and I picked them up and I looked at the inside and then I looked at the outside of both of these I think it's a clear winner of which one I'm gonna be taking home with me so I don't want to hear you guys anymore in the comments below Dante, that's not that's not a point or a dipping glaze it's a brushing glaze you can't brush start brushing on the stuff huh? look okay I achieved this color by pouring it on you achieve this color by brushing it on and it probably takes you like four times longer to go ahead and glaze this entire thing with a brush it's also extremely annoying to brush glaze on because you have to get a nice even coat which means you have to do this all the way down the bowl and once the entire thing is coated then you have to do this all the way down the bowl and that's two coats and then you have to do this again all the way down the bowl and that is the standard three coats I would suggest putting four or five coats on this, which means I have to do that two more times. Sorry, I went on a little rampage. I apologize, but also you drove me to this madness. Now, if you're wondering what this last bowl is about, this last bowl is pretty interesting because I decided to put four or five coats on here just to make sure that I wasn't like cheesing the system because I kind of figured if I pour one layer on this bowl, well, that might be equal to about four or five layers on here. And I would say the colors didn't exactly come out equal, but you can very much see that these are truly the same exact glaze. So just to make sure I wasn't like wasting any glaze, I just got this bowl and put three normal coats on the inside, three normal coats on the outside, just like the instructions say. The instructions on the back of this bottle technically say to put three coats of the glaze all the way around, but I'll be honest with you, I never do that, and I also don't know anyone else that does that. The high majority of people really want a thicker coat to achieve this kind of color, and I pour on most of my glazes to achieve this kind of color. So I thought to myself, what, about, what if I've been doing it wrong? What if I've been doing it wrong the entire time? And so I got another bowl, and I just put three normal coats on there, and I can tell you without a doubt that I was right in the first place. This is garbage. You can definitely see that this glaze still is Blue Lagoon on a darker clay body, but it just, it just didn't come out very well. The majority of the clay body looks kind of clearish thin. It looks like I just didn't put enough glaze on there. The inside looks a little better, and by a little, I truly do mean a little bit better. You can see that this is a type of blue glaze, but even this doesn't come close to the fantastic colors that I got in this bottle. The only bowl out of the set of these three testers here that come close to this color is this bowl right here, which by the way was the one that I poured on. Pretty soon I'll be doing a video on brushing versus dipping versus pouring versus spraying just to show you guys how they come out differently when you apply them differently because it really is a very large difference as you can see in this very very small test right here. And this was just brushing versus pouring on the glaze but I just wanted to show you guys the reason as to why I pour on the high majority of my glazes. The trick to pouring on your glaze is to put it in there, roll it out real quick into another vessel and then get that vessel and pour that back into the bottle. That seems like a lot of work, but it still is miles and miles easier and faster than like turning the bowl around, glazing it the proper lawful good way of like spinning it as you coat on one glaze this way, and then to get another even coat, doing it this way all the way around the bowl and doing it on the inside, which means you have to do this job two times over and you have to make a coat of this at least, and I'm quoting the instructions here, at least three times, which as we have seen is kind of garbage because this is what it gets you when you do it three times. This is what it gets you when you do it four times. And this is what it gets you when you do it the dirty potter way. My anger, my anger levels are so high right now. For the final test, I thought we would just get some clay bodies and just mix up a little bit of clay. So this one, firstly, is my Randy's Red with Blue Lagoon. For some strange reason, my Randy's Red isn't acting upright. It, it's bubbling a lot of stuff here. It, it just doesn't look very good. I, I think we're just gonna kind of pass this. I need to fix the gravity of my Randy's Red, so I'm not going to count this as a real test style, but it, it pretty much just looks black, to be honest with you. It kind of looks like there's something wrong with my camera, but there's like 
clearly not, you know, it's, it's honestly just the bowl. So we're gonna do this test at another time. I just wanted to show you guys that I tried. I tried for you because I love you. This bowl here is Blue Lagoon first, and I of course dipped the entire thing with a little bit of Jeff Campana's mistake on top of it. For those of you who haven't been with the channel long enough, Jeff Campana's mistake is basically Jeff Campana's gray, but I put like way too much cobalt inside of it, so it turned really, really blue. Actually, I think I have a real tester around here somewhere. Let me find it. This is essentially what Jeff Campana's gray looks like now. It's pretty much Jeff Campana's mistake blue, but I mixed this color on top of this color on this bowl right here, and it almost kind of sort of made an oil spot glaze, but not really. This isn't really oil spot, but it is a fantastic color. Guys, it's my new girlfriend. There's something that's been kind of catching my eye about this glaze. This glaze is not at all a Celadon glaze. Nowhere on the bottle does it say it's Celadon. It's technically a Potter's Choice line of glaze from Amico, but it, it seems like if you don't put enough of the glaze on, you can very easily see through to the clay body if you just look a tiny bit. And keep in mind that this is this glaze mixed in with this glaze. So there's technically two glazes on here. It's probably more than four coats of glaze. And I can still see through to the clay body. I don't think it's the combination of these two because I do know that my Jeff Campana's mistake does have a clear body much like this. But I will also say that even, you know what, let me, let me find it. Even over here with the white test style that we had, this is still, you can kind of still see through to the texture. And I don't know why that is. I'm not saying that only Celadon glazes should be able to see through to the body, but I don't I don't really see that on the test tile. I thought this white part was part of the glaze, but it seems like this white part on the glaze test style on the bottle is just a result of me being able to see through to the clay body. So keep that in mind. This is not always 100% pure color. Sometimes it's just the glaze. Well, thank you Dirty Parters for joining me today. I just wanted to show you this glaze because a lot of you guys were like, stop doing Celadon glazes. And this is technically not a Celadon glaze. So there you go. You're your wish is is my on brand. If you guys would like to see any more of my artwork, the links are always down below. The Instagram, the Facebook, there's to there's a bunch of more glaze reviews that I always link on the next video playlist right after these videos. So if you ever want to see Marigold, that'll be right after this video. If you ever want to see Firebrick Red, I put these all in a playlist so that way you guys can watch them all day long. Hopefully sooner or later we'll get every single glaze from Amico down the list and then we can move on to another brand. But for now, we're just going to keep on going and then sooner or later we'll start mixing these glazes so that you guys can see what happens when you mix them. I'm pretty sure Amico gave me a list of all the mixtures they've already found, but I, I, I know a couple of cheat codes. I was absolutely not the kid who drew inside the lines in kindergarten. I went wherever I went and I found cool stuff along the way. Hopefully these glaze reviews are really helping you guys out to choose what glazes you want to buy off the shelf. I know people have been contacting me saying they bought like an entire gallon of Firebrick Red because they were so impressed with it. So I just, I'm really happy that I'm helping you guys out. I am starting to take suggestions though because I have so many glazes that you guys can probably demand any glaze and I most likely have it in my stock. So if you want to see any glaze that you're really curious about, go ahead put it in the comments below. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Oh, you're a dipping glaze. It's a brushing glaze. You can't brush. Start brushing all the stuff, right?